Hello all and welcome to another video and today is London Gaming Market Day. This will complete the hat trick. I went to the one back in March, I went to the one in July and today is Sunday the 3rd of November and the final one of the year. So yes, completing the hat trick. Looking forward to it, always a great time. There are lots of great people, lots of great stuff. I was there for four hours last time so probably going to be there for sort of the same time span. Again, so what am I hunting down this time? Well, funds aren't as high as last time. Can't treat myself as much as I did back in July. I have around about 50 quid in my wallet, but that is all my luxury money for the month. So as much as I'd love to spend it all, kind of don't want to spend it all at the same time, but probably will because, well, temptation. Love my games tonight. So we're hunting down Xbox 360 stuff, going for the full set. So anything I see cheap there that I don't have, I am probably going to nab it and pick it up and add it to the collection there. That is the one area that I might want to treat myself with, buy something a little bit dearer, something a little less common if I do buy something. Other games I'm looking for are Sega Game Gear. I'd love to add to that. I want a full set of that one day. really do love that little handheld. So with, with that, it doesn't matter if it's boxed. Buying boxed stuff for that is hard to find and can be expensive. So just want a full set, even if it's just cart only. So I'll be hunting down any cheap carts for that. And then finally, my new full set, which I've been going for, started only a couple of months ago, looking to get a full set of PlayStation 1 Platinums. So I've made a small indent into that. Some generosity from fellow YouTubers has helped there as well. So I'll be looking to hunt down sort of the cheaper ones for the PlayStation Platinum set as well, picking up any for that. One that I'm actually really looking forward to trying to find is actually FIFA, is a FIFA game. That's FIFA 98, Road to World Cup. Had it back in the day, passed it on, won it back. To me, it's probably the best FIFA game in the series ever. And I did love the football games back then. And uh, that also brings me on to a second Platinum I'm looking for, which is Adidas Power Soccer as well. And that's just because... When I got my PlayStation 1, it come bundled with that. So I would love to have that back again. And it made the Platinum series. So I'll be nabbing that. And quite randomly, I also want to look out for Ronaldo v Football as well. Can't see that being an expensive game. That did make it to Platinum. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm hoping to meet other YouTubers there. From what I've seen on Twitter, I know that UK Game is going to be there. So hoping to bump into him. I believe Pez82 is going to be there. So I'll have to bump, hope to bump into him. And Kim Justice is going to be there. Now, I've been an admirer of her work for several years. She loves her wrestling and is, was very much Sega growing up from what, I've, uh, from what I've watched, which is basically me as well when it comes to gaming and hobbies. So just want to meet her and just say thank you, really. And uh, the lovely Trista Bites as well may be there as well. She says she may pop by in a tweet, but I do believe she's not feeling too well and is a bit tired from the recent London MCM con. That has just happened, so hoping to say hello to them as well. And I think that just about wraps it up for the intro, so I'll be hoping to shoot some footage when I get into London, and certainly when I get into the gaming market, which I'm going to be paying early access for, because I did that last year, and it's quite nice to wander around when uh, it's not so uh, cattle market-like. So we are nearly at the train station. I've got a 40 minute train journey to Liverpool Street in which I've got to change onto the London Underground a couple of times. I only get the Liverpool Street to Holborn, change once on the Piccadilly line and end up in Russell Square, which is the final target. So, stop waffling on for now and I will do some more videoing in a minute and perhaps talk to you later. So we're here now at the train station, ready to go to the London Game Market, and uh, there's no one here. It's Sunday morning, so there's no commuters, I know that, but there's no one here. <laughs> I just thought that was quite cool, actually. Uh, train is about seven minutes away now, so won't be long before we're on our way to London, and the next footage you will see will probably be me getting off at Russell Square and having a mosey round whilst waiting for it to close in on 11 for the early access so i will now talk to you again in london <laughs> okay so we are here now we are in russell square which is where the london game market is it's about quarter past 11 so we're about three quarters of an hour early for the early axis so it's up here to the right it's about five ten minute walk away and as you'll see here on the right is a pret here so i'm going to grab a cup of coffee and some breakfast hit that 
then go to the London Game Market and wait for whatever time is left before they let us in early access. So the next footage you'll see will be inside the London Game Market.
well I'm home now I'm in my hometown I am about a 10 minute walk away from my house and what a day it's been an absolutely belter of a day I'm home two hours later than I anticipated but flipping hell do I not care one bit the level of enjoyment that I anticipated has been much higher than I imagined and it's been an absolute belter of a day and it's largely been down to who I've met now I rattled off four names at the beginning that I knew that would be there sadly I only met 50% of them I was looking and I appreciate it's only looking one way because I'm an off-screen guy and you're not going to recognise a pair of arms or hear my voice and perhaps recognise it so apologies to Pez82 and that UK gamer I was looking but our paths just did not cross now the paths that did cross straight away when I was queuing up early access 20 minutes before getting in lo and behold turn around at the tables in the foyer was Kim Justice and her partner now the woman's been entertaining me for a couple of years for free and my anxiety nearly got the better of me but after about five minutes or so i said no you've got to do this i mean it cost me about 10 15 places in the queue but it was a small price to pay to thank someone for some exceptional work which they've done and again entertained me for a couple of a couple of years for free so i did that big thank you to kim justice if you are watching just thank you again for all the excellent work you put in on YouTube over a couple of years or so. Next person I met was Trista Bias, who put in a tweet that perhaps she may or may not be there due to illness and tiredness, whatever. But she was, she was actually stalling and uh, I went over again, had to pluck up the courage and again, so welcoming, welcoming, genuinely nice person, one of the nicest people I think I've ever met. So pleasant and it was great that I spent about 10 minutes with her talking absolutely fantastic hope to cross paths with her again another event and, and just say hello again again her channel's amazing so in fact any channel that i people that have channels that i'm mentioning now i'm going to put their channels in the description and you really need to be subscribing to them if you love your gaming uh beyond that i went to a school a school a store with uh number skull and on it was chris from games you loved who actually worked out it was me in kind of a roundabout way uh spent about Christ, about 15 20 minutes talking to Chris, and again, top bloke puts other people first when it comes to shouting out YouTubers and stuff like that and promoting other people. So, yeah, top bloke, Chris, fantastic to talk to you. And uh, yes, hope our paths cross again as well. A future event, too. And I spent the next probably couple of hours scrolling around the event, not really seeing anybody. And I was on my last lap round, I had going back to a retro faith stall in mind to pick up a couple of games, which I saw right at the beginning and lo and behold when i went to the numbskull stall again i passed it i saw two youtubers that i've been watching for quite a while and it was nick from retro break and pete from on a retro tip now i had to go over and say hello to both of them again beat the anxiety i've got a little bit more confident after saying hello to trista and kim and said hello to the pair of them nick is again generally really pleasant nice bloke he was like, you know, asked me who I was and I said I had a channel and subscribed to it there and then, which absolutely blew me away. I'm always flattered when a much bigger YouTuber drops a sub on my channel. And that brings me on to Pete from One Retro Tip as well, because much bigger YouTuber than me, but really pleasant, friendly, welcoming bloke. And because so it was at my last round trip and he, after talking for about five minutes, he was like, we're all going to go get a beer. Want to come along? And I was like, are you sure? Are you OK? And yeah, sure, I went. And... I had to shoot off to Retro Face Stall and get the couple of games that I wanted, which I did. And of course, it was great chance to her. She came along for a beer as well. It was at a place next door to the event. And next thing I know, I'm there. For, I've had three beers and a couple of hours have gone by. And we've just talked about what we love, our gaming, a bit of YouTube, <laughs> a bit about me. Hope I didn't go in too deep with that. And just generally had an awesome, fantastic time. As I say, it was more than I expected so welcoming i mean do you know i never anticipated i'd get this out of doing youtube and i'm so glad i did basically in the end and it's just been an absolutely belting day met loads of people and yeah it's time to pick up the pace go home get into bed and we'll probably do the pickups either tomorrow morning or the day after and get this video uploaded as soon as possible because i've waffled on for quite a bit here so i'm going to sign off here and just say thank you to all that i've met today in everything you've done and how good you've been and it's been a real personal victory for me as well as an anxiety sufferer so thank you so much to all and let's uh let's sign off now and do the pickup section 
uh, very, very shortly for you. Speak to you soon. Hello again, and it's time for the pickup section for the London Game Market video. And again, seriously, what a day. But uh, we've got a pile of games here to show you. So let's crack on with those. And yes, I did hit a little bit of all my targets. I did get some 360 stuff. PlayStation 1 Platinum's one out in total. And I've got a Game Gear game as well. But I also picked up a couple of PS2 games. And one of them is what you are looking at right now. Now this one still had a box of games on the floor. There was only like 10 or so in it. And I spotted the Soul Calibur game in there. Now, if you've seen stuff on my channel before, you know I like my beat-em-ups. And I don't have this one, so when I saw it in there, I thought I'd pull it out, have a look. Flipped it over and saw the price was only a quid. So if I ain't got a Soul Calibur game and it's only a quid, I'm going to pick it up all day long. Did look in it, I always check the discs in there. If they're not completely sealed up, the disc is fine. And we've got a manual in there and even a bit of extra paraphernalia behind it trying to sell us the complete official guide. So it is proper complete in box as well and only a quid. As I say, I love my beat-em-ups and Soul Calibur is definitely a franchise I like as well. Only game I bought from that store and then this comes on to another PlayStation 2 game which was the only game I bought from that store as well. And like I said, I like my beat-em-ups. And when I saw this nice copy of Virtual Fighter 4 sitting there for only three quid, it's got enough weight in it to suggest that the manual's in there as well. I just had to pick it up as well. So, yes, again, I say like my beat em ups, like the Virtual Fighter series. It's a shame that it's kind of uh, come to an end, or hopefully it's just sleeping and they'll bring up a, another game in the future. Who knows? But uh, we haven't seen a Virtual Fighter game for a while, but uh, all the ones that they have released, I have liked. Even the original one, which has aged horrendously, I still do like that as well. But yes, nice to have Virtual Fighter 4 in the collection. As I say, with the PlayStation 2 stuff, I always buy stuff that I'm only going to play. I'm not really collecting for it, but any beat-em-up that I see for it, I'm definitely going to pick up. And when you see Virtual Fighter 4, for three quid, and you love beat-em-ups, you're going to pick it up all day long. So the last PlayStation 2 game that I bought, I bought two games from that store on two separate occasions, because I... Kept going around quite a few times because you will miss things on stalls even if you have already been to the store I find. And this is what happened because the second time I went to that stall they had a sh sort of cabinet slash shelving unit around the side of it with a bunch of PlayStation 2 and 1 games on it. And I saw this amongst it. Now I like my beam ups yes but I also like my compilations especially compilations of classic games. I've seen someone else pick this up fairly recently. It might be Sean of Retro Games Revived. And I saw it and I was like, if I ever see that, I've got to have that one day. And nicely sealed. Again, it's weighty enough to su suggest that there is a manual in there. So it's got all the games on it that are absolute belters. Um, it's got Mortal Kombat 2 and 3, which I do have on my Xbox 360 hard drive. But looking at some of those other games, I can now play Arch Rivals. I can now play Primal Rage again, beat em up fan. Absolutely loving the fact that's on there. Love the fact the hard driving's on there. Narc's on there. APB as well. I believe that's a, a top-down race where you play as a cop car and you've got to chase criminals and, and bash them until they sort of uh, explode and, and you then complete the level and you move on to doing it again in, much, in a much tougher situation. I think that's what that is. I may be wrong, but uh, the amount of games that are on there, I mean, even Pit Fighter, which isn't a great game, but is a good game because it ain't a great game, if that makes sense. You know, sometimes we all love a game because it's bad. I think Pit Fighter falls in that category for me. But yes, there's so many classics on there. And for a fiver... I was always going to pick that up, I thought, when I saw it. So, yes, had to have it. So, that's the PlayStation 2 stuff out of the way. Uh, we'll go on to the 360 stuff and what also I bought from that store. And this is just a game that I've never seen before. I, so, I look at a lot of 360 stuff and it still throws up stuff that I haven't seen before. And that is a game called Knight's Contract. Absolutely nothing known about this. Nothing at all. In a slip case. And it just looks quite interesting. And I think they had that up at, where's the price gone? £6, there it is, on the front. So yes, don't know a lot about it, but very happy to have it in the collection. As a slipcase, a little bit of smut on the back there for you. And yeah, I look forward to giving it a try. So there's not an awful lot I can say about this one, apart from never seen it before. It looks like a lot of fun as a slipcase, and we all have an extra bit of cardboard, don't we, Eddie? And the only other Xbox 360 game I bought, I say, wasn't a good turnout for the Xbox 360 there. There wasn't much of it. It was either a little bit pricey for what it was, and there wasn't many cheap games that I didn't already own. However, I come across this one, which I've never heard of before. Another one I've never seen. Two in, two in, one, two in one day. And that is Blade Storm The Hundred Years' War. 
Uh, I nearly bought this off another store for six quid, and I thought that's a little bit top heavy actually. I'll uh, I'll leave that. So I think I can find it cheaper. So it does pay to kind of keep going around and shopping around in these gaming markets, which is what I do. I spent quite a few hours there. I spent about three hours on the floor, I think, before I went for a for a beer with a, a fellow YouTubers, which I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed. But anyway, yes, Blade Storm, two quid. Complete in box with manual, nice condition disc as well. So yes, nice to add to the 360 collection with a game I've never played before or never heard of as well. Okay, just going to show you a little bit, a little bit of hardware quickly because actually there was a third item from that store which I got the the Midway Treasures Night contract from actually, and that was because I saw a tub of PlayStation controllers on the floor and I thought I'd go through it because I. I still would like a second PS3 controller. I also need one to go with a console that I want to trade into CEX. Now, I saw another store selling these and they were £17. And I think CEX sell these six axis ones for £22. Uh, I'll try and find an image and stick it up there actually. And when I saw this in a box full of PS2 and PS1 controllers, and it was the only one there, because literally when I saw this was eight quid, which is an absolute steal for a PS3 controller in this age. I dug through the box and this was the only one in there because I would have bought a second one for eight quid as well for that price. But anyway, there was one in there. So the PlayStation 2 controllers were seven pounds and the PS1 controllers were six pounds. So underpriced, but absolutely loving the fact that you can actually find bargains at a gaming market as well. So very pleased to have that. I think before we do the PlayStation 1 games, um, the only Game Gear game that I was able to find, not a very rare one at all, but one I don't own, but one I used to borrow a lot back in the day, and that is G-Log Air Battle for only three quid. Game Gear stuff, there wasn't a great deal of it there. What there was there, I either already owned and was very common, or was a little bit too pricey for what I wanted to pay for car only. So, well, I saw this as I picked it up, and it's it's a great little game, G-Log. You pick sort of, you've got a screen full of missions, and, and you have to obviously complete all the missions, and different little things like shoot down eight enemy fighters and, and so on like that from what I remember. It was a lot of fun and a lot of times I'd get close to either one or two missions left and it's quite challenging as well from what I remember. So it'd be interesting to play it now I'm a lot older. Maybe I might find it a bit easier or maybe I might have even got a little bit worse to be honest with you. Yes, but G-Lock Air Battle for only three quid. Uh, pleased to actually add a little bit of a game game to my collection. Now in the intro, as we go into the PS1 games, uh, you might have uh, remember, remembered that I said that I wanted a copy of Ronaldo V Football quite randomly. And quite randomly, I found a copy of it. It was literally the only one there. So this is a case of me overpaying a little bit. They, I said, how much for this, mate? And he said, a five. It's the only, the only game I bought from that particular stall as well. I knew five pounds was too much, but it was the only one in there. And I wanted it because this game sort of came out in the late 90s, early 2000s, in that sort of time period for me, when I used to actually enjoy playing football games, when FIFA wasn't as realistic as it is today, so it kind of wasn't releasing the same game year on, year out. There were a lot of other football games that released one-offs, like Ronaldo v Football, like Three Lions, which is actually possibly the worst football game I've ever played. I know Actor Soccer had two or three games, actually. But there were so many and they were more arcadey and there were less realism because of it and, and for me it was more fun so I like football games from that area and this is one that I haven't played so that is why I kind of randomly wanted it but yes it is complete in box with manual as well so yes this is a game I've never played so I'm, and heard of so I'm actually looking forward to trying it. Also in the intro I did quote another couple of football games which were Platinums. But I couldn't find them in Platinum. So I couldn't find FIFA 98 Road to World Cup at all in Platinum. But I did find it non-Platinum. But I thought I would wait for that one. But this one is a fine example of a game not being too great, not being too well known. But holds a lot of memory. So therefore, you kind of really want it. And I did find a copy of Adidas Power Soccer. Now, it isn't in Platinum. So I will probably be buying it again at some point. But when I saw it there for only a quid, in great condition, complete in box with manual... I had to have it just because, again, when I first got my PlayStation 1, which I saved up ages for, three games it came bundled with, Tekken 2, Crash Bandicoot, and Adidas Power Soccer. So when I got my PlayStation 1, this was my football game for quite some time until I eventually bought FIFA 98 and then ISS Pro 98, which took over my life when it comes to playing football games. That is my favourite football game, potentially, of all time. It's a toss-up between that and FIFA 98. They were amazing. So, yes, as I say, it's only a quid. It's not the greatest of games. I mean... 
but you can score amazing long distance swerve shots and uh, as you'll see by the graphics there it's cold so the pitch is basically looking like an ice rink but uh, yes a lot of fun i haven't played it in many years i haven't played it god well over 10 years so i am certainly looking forward to actually playing this again but as i say it's just a fine example of a game holding dear memories for a reason even though it's not good meaning something to you and this is a, a, a great one okay so we are on to the playstation platinums now we've got a stack of them i was targeting them and as i say not had a great deal of money and funds going into this market so the fact that i was starting out playstation one platinums and i could then go for all the cheaper ones and i don't have many i think i only had about 20 or 25 somewhere around about that market going into the game market so i had plenty to aim for and plenty of common ones to aim for that shouldn't be too much one of the very first stalls that i went to after i did my scooch round filming uh, the guy there, there was a low place one games on there it was about four platinums and two of them were in really good nick and as i was going through them the guy said just said to me i just want rid of those mate all playstation one games are two pound so with that i got from the guy i got in cold blood which I must admit I've never played, and that also applies to Tomorrow Never Dies, which was also, again, because he said £2 a game, so I picked up those two. Both got manuals, both got great condition discs, and very pleased to add them to them and get them crossed off this PlayStation 1 Platinum's list that I was going for. Now, the guy was very friendly, he was very genuine, spoke to me, said he was, I think he said he was quite new to it, and he had an Instagram account as well, and he said, would you mind dropping us a follow? And, and absolutely no, no problems with that. As I say, he was very friendly and very helpful. So I did that. He's called Kid at Heart Collectibles, I do believe, on Instagram. If I can actually fathom out how to post a link from Instagram in the description, I will leave a description to his Twitter account. So please do drop that. A follow, really friendly, really helpful guy. Okay, so next up in the Platinums, is one that I got from the same guy that I got that Adidas Power Soccer from. And this is a game I have played, finished, and absolutely loved. Doesn't need much explanation to, to many a gamer, and that's Die Hard Trilogy. What a game this was. Absolutely fantastic. And again, played it multiple times. Even though I completed it, I was quite happy to play through it again. It was that good and that much fun. So, again, haven't played it in a hell of a long time. So, play it again. Will I still be able to finish it? as easily as I did back then so yeah fantastic sort of comp you know has all three movies in it obviously because it's called trilogy and each one is a different style of game as well absolutely a hell of a lot of fun now the next game was one again that I also I actually owned back in the day Dark Trilogy was one that I borrowed back in the day and rented out for my local video shop many a time but one that I actually owned back in the day and kind of regret selling as well because it's actually, I hate using the term, but it's actually, to me, a little bit of a hidden gem. But many people know about it. And that's Porsche Challenge. It's a cracking little racing game. Uh, the only car you can be, I think, is the Porsche Boxster. I think that's pretty much what it's all about. And a fantastic game. So much fun with this. It it's, goes from relatively uh, intermediate to difficult, shall we say, in, in quite a bit of a swerve from what I remember. But absolutely fantastic game. really is. Highly recommend it, and this was bought from the good people of Console Passion, and I've got no qualms of checking out anything from them, because every time I buy from them, their stuff is also always in good nick, in great quality. So absolutely fantastic. And then finally, final store visit. I've got three games from one store, and I went to them right at the very end, because I had trouble getting to their store so much as I kept walking around, and it was great to talk to you as well, Retro Faith. And it was the very last thing I did before I went to the pub and had a drink with some fellow YouTubers. And I'll run over there. I said, oh, there's two games that I want from there. I picked up two games. Faith very kindly said, oh, if you pick a third game, we do a deal on three. So I actually, when I picked up the first two, I actually, one of the games I picked up was the wrong game. But it was a game I wanted that I'd seen at another stall. And so I was, as soon as she said that, I was able to then pick up the actual other game that I wanted. And then buy three from her and get a deal out of it and also get... Uh, that other, other game which I wasn't meaning to get to start with. But anyway, the three games. Platinums. Road Rash. Needs no explanation, Road Rash. Neither does Wipeout. Neither does Ace Combat. Now you'll actually see in the video that I did while I was uh, walking around and videoing. That I look at a stall and look at a couple of boxes on the floor. And I'm actually looking at these on the floor. And the very first games that I looked at when I was in there. And the prices on them were the best in the market by far. They were best in the market by far, 
before Shikali did a discount on us. And when 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 the prices of the, all three of them were added together, come to ninety pound, she said, just give us fifteen. Absolutely fantastic deal, absolute steal. So basically a five reach for these three games and Wipeout is an absolute classic, as is Road Rash. And I've got to be honest with you, Air Combat, as, as well known as it is, it's a game I've never played but always wanted to. So this one I'm looking forward to giving a bash to. And these two I'm looking forward to playing as well. Wipeout, again, is another one I have played in many a year as well, probably well over 10 years as well. Road Rash I have, though. Road Rash, again, needs no explanation. So... What can I say? I absolutely fantastic day. I'm very pleased with what I've got. I must admit, nothing really stands out as ultra rare. But what I have got, I'm very pleased with. I've got plenty to be cracking on with. So glad to have boosted my PlayStation 1 collection. But more importantly, it's, it, in the, at the end of the day, I went there hoping to meet some people. A lot more people turned up. Or a lot more people there that I didn't realise were going to be there. And I ended up having just the best day ever purely basically because of who I met and I can't encourage people enough to go to these events and, and just to, to mingle with like-minded people and talk to people about the passions and the hobbies that we love and you'll have an absolutely fantastic day and that, ladies and gentlemen this just leaves me to say thank you for watching I mean if you've enjoyed what you're watching please consider dropping a sub feel free to comment below on anything you've seen in the video and yeah please feel to drop it a like as well and just seriously absolutely cracking day I can't get over it and I just want to say Thank you very much to everyone who spoke to me there, or well, that I spoke to, because yes, I'm off camera. So thank you to every much, thank you ever so much to everyone that I spoke to for making me feel welcome. And ladies and gentlemen, that just leaves me to say thank you for watching. And as always, take care.